Oh, you know what? Fucking toaster, fucking toaster off. Oh, can someone you... saw the new movie. There can be only one. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale After Dark. I'm your host, Mike Nixtape, and along with me are my excellent film officiatos. Let's start off with the main guy from Montreal, Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Hey, guys! So, how are you all doing today here in this beautiful week of the sharks going yum, yum, yum? Indeed, we'll get into that more. And let me present a new co-host to you guys. Her name is Sylvie, also known as Shame on a Pretzel. Hi, this is my first time. How are you, everyone? Nice meeting you. Yeah! yeah. Woo. Um, for longtime viewers who do watch this, the select few who do, which I congratulate you guys. Thank you for watching. James and Morgan are not on here. James will be coming out a little later. Morgan will be on hiatus, so Sylvia will be taking her his place for a while until he comes back. Just for well, not until he comes back. I mean, if he does, like she can still stay. Well, I, I, thank you, thank you, because my mind is going a little kooky tonight. All right, I'm all chopped up full of sharks. All right. <laughs> that and also you had a bit of technical difficulties and you're you're just too marveled at your new stuff. It's like, oh, oh, new logo, oh. <laughs> Thanks. So, yes, Sunday, today, August 10th, starts Discovery Channel's Shark Week. And what a better way to start off Shark Week with this episode talking about shark movies, whether it be the classic killer shark movies or the everyday sharks that you see in in films like you can see them in animated films and cameos and all that good stuff. Cameos? <laughs> yes, like, for example, let me, let, let me, cameos, like, um, hmm, like, frickin' laser sharks. Oh, right. And, oh, right, and Austin Powers, right. Oh, it's not Snowflake! It's not Snowflake! It's not Snowflake! Ace Adventure. Back to oh, Texas. right. Right, right. Oh, right, I forgot about that. I, I like what nature calls better. I, I tune out with the original. Oh, gosh. <laughs> My friends always quote from Ace Ventura, especially with the rhino. Oh, when he comes out of the... Yeah. <laughs> When he was oh born again, let's say. <laughs> we'll talk about Jim Carrey. Like, talk about Jim Carrey in the episode. I was expecting, like, when you said cameos of sharks, like, I thought the movie, like, like a movie would have a brief moment for for a shark to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, because um. I was watching, there, there was a program at one point, there was a show called Shark Mania, and they counted down, like, top 15 shark moments, and they counted down every single one, including the shark movies and the, the cameos, like Austin Powers and Ace Ventura. I was like, oh, they counted those too. All right. It's not a shark movie, but it's a cameo. Would, would uh, Back to the Future 2 count? Like, w oh, like that, I know it's just a hologram, but... They, yeah, that's a very brief cameo by Jaws 19. Yeah. <laughs> Which will not be coming out next year. Oh. No, instead we're gonna get the nineteenth crazy shark movie. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so let's start this off and <clears throat> let me talk about these different kind of killer shark movies. I'll start it off. Um, there's no, when you think about killer shark movies, there's normally two different kinds. There's the natural shark movies, where it's just the plain Jane shark attacking the people. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's the fantasy shark movies, where they add a little twist to the shark. Whether it's um, a mega shark, or like a dino shark, you know, sand sharks, you know, swim through the sand, sn snow sharks, and swim through snow, and etc., um, 
And another one includes a Sharktopus. <laughs> Sharktopus. Oh, uh, Sharktopus. Where the... Sharktopus? Sharktopus. Sharktopus. Where they combine two different animals together to make one animal. And Sharktopus is the brainchild, more or less, produced by Roger Corman, the king of B-movies. It's basically where they take a shark and octopus, and they take their chromosomes and sharktopus. It's basically, they have a, sh it's like a shark body with a head, and then the legs and the fins are like the tentacles. It's really weird. Um, I saw it recently for this episode, and it... <sighs> Sharktopus was developed for a Navy SEAL kind of thing where they, it's trained to kill, you know, on command. Has little, like a little, um, collar. That, sensor? Like a sensor collar where they can control them through, like, a joystick. And somehow, um, <clears throat> it gets detached now. It's starting to kill people. So they have to find it and kill it in this whole movie. But in the movie, you got Eric Roberts in the film. Oh, man. Eric Roberts, man. He's the quintessential bad guy in every other film. But in this film, he's a scientist who developed Sharktopus. And he's trying to save it so he can use it for the naval purpose. And he is delightful. I love Eric Roberts in the film. He's like... <laughs> He's usually drunk too. He was drinking because he has to find Sharktopus, and the in the head honcho keeps calling like, "Hey, where's Sharktopus?" Eh, shut up. <laughs> um, in this movie, it's not that it's it's a unique idea at best, but the acting is very faux. It's very fake because. There's two times where I noticed that there was, and the both times were reactions to Sharktopus. The first time was they first introduced Sharktopus, where the girl goes in the water, they go swimming, and the shark comes, and the best friend's like, Bree! Bree! There's a shark! 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 Look out! There's a shark! <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm, very, I'm checking... Oops, very, sorry very bland and like not even expressive it's just like shark Bray, look out shark <laughs> second time another as a dude this time and, and the best friend's like dude watch out for the shark I'm just I'm just banging myself in the head like where are they getting these actors and actresses but it's a sci-fi slash asylum movie, so I'm not surprised. Uh, I gotta say, like, I'm looking at Eric Roberts' IMDb page. Never have I ever seen, like, an entire list of, like, of post-production and pre-production yes. things. Holy crap, he's in everywhere. Yeah, Plus he's... the fact he's in freaking Expendables and The Dark Knight? Yes. How the fridge do you go into down... Like, how do you go in a downward slope where you appear in freaking Sharktopus? I don't know. It's just weird. And he does, spoiler alert, he does die by Sharktopus. He, uh, he gets shafted by the tentacle. And he oh, just... no. He died. What a spoiler. Someone died in a Sharktopus movie. So there's no tentacle rape or anything? Or traditional rape? Right? Chapter this is an American up. film, not Japanese. <laughs> okay. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I just had to. I just had to. Yes, it's American film, not Japanese. I Actually, I don't think Japanese even made a shark movie. <laughs> I think sharks are lame. I think they're, they prefer their giant uh, Godzilla monsters and stuff. Yeah, of course. Of course. Although this... Yeah... Besides, like, how can you make a a cost like a like a rubber suit out of a shark to puss, You know, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to maneuver. And and the thing is, with shark to puss, he can go on land and water, which is weird because he uses those tentacles to walk on land for a brief second before <laughs> going in the water. 
<laughs> I yeah. can just imagine like the shark to pussies online. Oh, excuse me. Boom. Where's a hat? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so the the shark was like in a facility in California, and he travels down to my, Mexico. So like he has a taste for Mexican food. Uh, <laughs> and, and boy, it just it hammers down on the Mexican culture. And at one point, I swear to God, I was there's one scene where they play like Santana, like for a brief second. Like I heard the song, and I was like. They're playing Santana shark movie. It's like, what the fuck? You don't know what to like. It's one of those moments, I guess, where you have to expect the, the unexpected. Yeah. Well, start the moving, start the grooving. Holy crap! There's a shark. Oh, and the best part, um, there's a lot of subplots going. There's other characters besides um, the big corporation scientists trying to track down the shark to There's there's a group, um, there's a news lady and a cameraman that's trying to get the biggest scoop ever with Sharktopus. Um, of then, course, there's going to be those news people. Yeah, and they both die at the end, of course. Oh, you know. Mm-hmm. And th- their acting is poor, because they're like... Ah, ah, just don't even scream. And, just... and I heard the Wilhelm scream a couple of times in the movie, too. And <laughs> recycle it over and over. Now, you know what would be better? Oh, I, I forgot the name, but you know that, that longer scream is like... Aah! I like that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a classic. And then there's, there's like that, and then there's like these um, this pirate radio. Like this guy has a pirate radio in Mexico, and this mm-hmm. dumb blonde chick. And this is just out of context of the shark, but it's just the weirdest thing I noticed, like listening to it, and it He's doing the radio show and he's mentioning a band and it's called the Cheetah Whores. The Cheetah Whores. The Cheetah Whores. It's a real band. They mix like 60s funk and delic with 70s funk and it's just a weird band. It's like really they put a real band in the name. I thought they just made up something that parodies the Cheetah Girls or something. There are Josie and the Pussycats meets the Cheetah Girls, mix it in a blender and oh, ra- make it rated X. No, 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 no. The Cheetah Girls grew up and they went through that Miley Cyrus phase, and that's what happened. <laughs> oh, okay. Or like the Pussycat Dolls, and then. Oh, my God. Pretty much. <laughs> they whored God. out, and hence became the Cheetah Girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, it was. Um, it's very programmable because it's got in the brain, you can program the shark up to post to attack, and but since the main connection came off it they have to like shoot like this dart where they have to reattach to the brain and they have to remotely kill they do like a kill switch on it it sharktopus overall is a mindless popcorn flick and you have to shock and awe when it comes to the acting and then the creature itself mhm mm. I mean, like, but still, like, nowadays with all the amount of shark movies, it, it's one of those things is that when you enter, it's like, what do you expect? This is the kind of movie where you come in and you want to see crazy shark killing people. Like, and that's, that's, and that's, that's what the you get. That's what you get. You get a lot of those scenes. There's, there's a point where there's a bungee jumping girl and the shark goes, Whoa. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> They're, they do, and the shark octopus goes around the beach grabbing people, slashing people. You get the killings; it's perfect. You get like, oh, it's a good kill, and I mean, you get that feel if you're a fan of those CGI sharks killing people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> emphasis on the CGI. The emphasis on the CGI because it's more computer than it is shark. Yeah, there's no practical effects; it's all CGI for sharks. Oh, levels. no, I mean, it looks more computer than it does shark. It is. No I one's going to buy that. This looks a, this looks like an actual thing that exists. I know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. I know what you mean. Hey. Yeah. <sighs> okay. 
Done with all that. All right. So, all right. Next. Well, I mean, like next turn. Yeah. Ah, oh, crap! Nice. It's me, isn't it? Yeah. Do it. Well, it looks like. All right, fine. Okay, so. Okay, so <laughs> as guys may know, recently there is a new shark movie that really that really made big buzz, and it's, it has the same quality as Sharktopus, which is the sequel to the ever beloved Sharknado, Sharknado Two, the second one. And I was one of the crazy people that decided. Let's watch this. Let's see what ha happens. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> that is literally one of the craziest things I have ever seen. Have you have you two seen it yet? Or I have yet to see it. I have it I have yet to see it, but I didn't have time to watch it. Wow, okay. One thing I gotta say is that it really starts off by getting you into the mood. Because now, they actually start off with sharks on a plane, a sharknado on a plane, oh. and they they actually even start out with that um, that Twilight Zone episode where like the main character looks outside. It's like, there's a stewardess. I think I saw a shark outside. Like literally start out like that, and then it starts out with the sharknado where the door opens and then all the sharks come in. It's the oh, thing, no. like, the sharks, they, like, as you'd expect in something like, the writing is terrible, I mean, they try to put emphasis on, like, they, they try to make, like, character development, but it has absolutely nothing with the sharks, or, like, the Sharknado or whatever, and it, and also, like, sharks look terrible. Oh, of course. Like, there's no denying, they look like they belong in, like, some kind of... Uh, uh, animated ripoff or something like that. They belong in something like in Video Brain Quito, like in Ratatouille. But there are two factors in Shark in Sharknado 2 that it just, like, I can only just sit there and be amazed at it. Number one, it's what they do with sharks. You gotta give these guys credit. They are they are ridiculously creative when it comes to what they do all these sharks. Like, not only are they flying around, like, even with shark... There are some sharks on fire. <laughs> there is oh literally a scene... There is... Sorry, Mike, I had to spoil some stuff. There's literally a scene... Okay. They, they're, like, the main character's on the car, and one of his friends... Dude! Finn! Frogger! And that's what happens. He plays Frogger with the sharks. And then... Oh, what else? Oh, yeah, like, cuts a shark, like, completely in half. And also, there's that beautiful ending you would probably see in the commercials where the dude rides a shark in a Sharknado. <laughs> and number two, okay, number two, that makes it so insane to watch, the amount of cameos that are in it, it is ridiculous. Like, this is literally to the point that it should have been called Sharknado 2000. Okay, some of the... <laughs> there are even cameos that I haven't even spied. There's, like... Okay. There's, apparently, Ke Kelly Osborne. I didn't... I didn't notice. She was actually the stewardess in the beginning. There was Matt Lauer and Al Rooker. And they often hmm. appear... They often appear, like... And um, another thing I want to mention is that... Uh, the Weather Network and the Today Show are actually really, really good in um, forecasting Sharknadoes, because they even got little animations for when the shark Sharknado was coming. And there's even one scene in the Weather Network, okay, at 12, okay, at noon, it's going to be the Sharknado, and then at 2, that's when all the sharks are going are to come down. Uh, let's see, there's also Kelly and Michael. There's one of the guys from Shark Week, which is both surprising and not surprising. Uh, what else? Oh, apparently, I didn't spot this, but apparently uh, Billy Ray Cyrus makes a cameo. Yep. <clears throat> um, holy crap, I, I, I was shocked when I saw when about, I heard about that. What about Bismarck Key? There's Bismarck Key! Like, he was, at, he was in a p pizzeria, and like, Yo, so what are you do? So what are you doing here? Hey, aren't you going there? Go, oh, aren't you going back in La La Land? It's like, that, that is... That is so freaking Bismarcky. I mean, like, 
how else can you recognize you? You got what I need. It's like, you could just, like, with these two things, with the sharks and the cameos, you can only just sit there and just watch. Oh, and there's another thing. There's that baseball player. There's, like, this old Yankee. Like, he just, it's like, he, he had a, he told his backstory, and then suddenly, like, his last scene that he appears is that he literally hits a home run with a shark. Uh, and that's that's all I can say is that it's a cra- it's a stupid movie, but holy crap, what it delivers is freaking amazing. The, with the amount of things that you can do with the sharks and the amount of celebrity cameos that they got in. Oh, and by the way, oh, and one more I just realized. Uh, this uh, this movie is actually sponsored by Subway since they also brought in the Subway guy. Like he was literally okay. It's the subway guy, boy, eating a subway. Looking at another guy, he, he said, "You know, you should eat, you should eat more fresh." Uh, and that's the thing. That's and I just realized the subway guy eating a subway at a subway. I was like, "Oh my Jesus!" And I think behind him there was a subway poster. <laughs> so yeah, Tremendous. that's Sharknado too. Watch it for the crazy things they do with the sharks and the celebrity cameos. Holy crap, you're in it you're in a you're in it for a wild ride. Holy crap. My god. So Sounds Mike, good, are you though. pumped up? I'm pumped up now, yeah. I saw the previous for it. I was I I just have it on my DVR waiting to be watched. I just didn't have time to watch it. Oh, trust me, it's... I'm excited it's for it. Crazy. It's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Your turn, Sylvie. Okay, um, so I don't know, Mike, did you want me to do the vi- the movie that I wanted to do, or was someone else going to do that movie? Because we had, like, two movies that I said. Did you say... Do you remember? Wasn't it... Because I was... Uh, Shark Tale? Yeah. Yeah. Well, someone else, someone else was gonna do that one though, right? No. 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 Okay. You're fine. Okay. I was about to, but then Mike said you were about to do. It. I was like, Ugh! well, I wouldn't have mind. You probably did it more in depth than me, because I, I had seen Shark Tale, but I, I hadn't, um, I haven't watched it recently. But I thought, you know, it's just shark related. Uh, oh, same, same with me. Like, go on. Yeah, it's a uh, you know Shark Tale. It uh, it kind of followed that same vein of of uh, DreamWorks ripping off Pixar for the quick buck. Uh, just like in the late 90s when yeah. Disney did A Bug's Life. And, uh, no, there, like that was actually more messed up. There were like major conflicts between that time. I heard, no, but I heard. I know what you mean because like this is like kind of the theme of like two anime films duking it out. Kind of like... Um, like Despicable Me or Megamind or uh, yeah. what's another one or Ants at, yeah Ants in a Bug's Life or or Madagascar in the Wild and yes like yes that's another one Surfs Up and any of those freaking Penguin movies and yeah but uh, it, like as a side note I actually it's usually I think it's usually common knowledge that the Disney Pixar films are supposed to be much better than their DreamWorks counterpart. Usually on the other side of the fence, I'm the I'm the minority that actually prefers the DreamWorks adaptation. So I actually prefer Ants to A Bug's Life, and I'm one of those people that prefers Shark Tale over Finding Nemo. I find Finding what? Nemo overrated. Yes. What? Yeah. I don't. It's not a bad movie, but I don't. I this like Shark good. Tale. This is good. This is good. Really. Oh. Like, from a critical standpoint, Finding Nemo is the better movie. I'm not going to yeah. argue that. But it's just, I, I don't see why people get so caught up on Finding Nemo. Uh, I, I'm still floored that they're doing a, a Finding Dory in, what, 2015, 2016? Like, that, is that's that kind really... of weird, too, I'll admit, but... Like, well, Pixar is not really notorious for sequels other than Toy Story, so that I, I'll give it to you there. That is kind of weird that they are doing a Finding Dory but yeah, 
But really? Like, you, you take Shark Tale over this? You take over freaking Muscle Crow and Jessica Simpson over Finding Nemo? I like it. it, it it's corny, and it, I guess, again, it take, it goes back to Ants, where, like, Ants is kind of creepy looking in the sense that DreamWorks had this weird fetish, or I don't know, of taking the character's face and basically just, like, plastering it on their CGI model. So it's basically the character in an ant form, and in Shark Tale, it's the same thing, but Will Smith as a fish. And yeah, but, like, they, do, they do that with all the characters. It just looks weird. You don't really see the characters. You just see the actors portraying them. This is a problem I never thought I would experience in an animated film. You're not supposed to see the freaking actors. And especially if they're fish. That makes it even weirder. So, like, you get weird fish with giant lips. So it's like, so it's like what the fish is that? Well, fish have fish lips, so it, it kind of it kind of plays into it. I think it's commendable that they're able to make it look like simultaneously a celebrity and a cold-blooded aquatic animal, you know? Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but you're, it's like, I'd rather want to see Oscar more than Will Smith, you know? It doesn't help well, either that the, that the actors don't really do much to change their voices. It's still, like, Will, it's still Will Smith. Well... Yeah, I, I get that, but that, that's what you go in for. You go in for, like I saw the Nostalgia Critics brief, he did that DreamWorks array thing, and he, he actually doesn't like it, which kind of bugged me. Smith fish. And, but I, I, I didn't want them really to change their voice. I think it's not like, ah. Uh, well, the, because the thing is, is that this is a DreamWorks film, and one of the yeah. signature, one of the signature aspects of a DreamWorks film is that they always hire A-list celebrities. I mean, look at Kung Fu Panda; they got like Angelina Jolie, Jack Black, uh, Seth Rogen, David Cross. Uh, crap! Well, they got Jackie Chan. They got oh, who else? I forgot his name. I am so stupid. Who who played Rain Man? Dustin Hoffman. I didn't see him. Thank oh. you. He was Shifu. I think yeah, he was Shifu in there. Yeah. And, like that that's what I'm trying. Every DreamWorks film, like, they need like an all star cast. And it's also part marketing like improving their characters. And that's the thing with Shark Tale. You got a major all star cast. You pretty much got Will Smith, Renee Zellweger, Angelina Jolie, Jack Black, Robert De Niro, and all those. They even got um uh, Martin Scorsese's, like, as that mm -hmm. pufferfish guy. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I've a I mean, film. You want to see more of the character. Like, even in something like Toy Story, you don't really see Tim Allen in, and uh, Tom Hanks. You see Woody and Buzz. In, in, in Shark Tale, you, you just see the actors and the character design. But it's like, it's like... You, it's just I don't know. Weird. Plus, all the weird pop culture references doesn't help either. Like it, it no, gives that... the movie, it gives the movie a more dated feeling. You know, even now, obsolete. And like that's and that's how I feel about Shark Tale. This is the it's the it's the signature DreamWorks film gone wrong because you take <clears throat> signature traits. And, like, you kind of mess them up. It's like, how can it go back? That's the thing. Well, again, it's not a movie. Like, I'll, I'll cry foul on the, the very, very contrived romance between Oscar and I can't remember the name of Renee Zellweger's character, but that sort of just, like, happened in the movie. So I, I understand. There's some stuff that's sort of tacked on. Um, but... You know, you were mentioning that the characters were just doing their own voice. I honestly, I didn't know Jack Black was doing his character until I found out it was Jack Black. Oh, like it's, yeah. I don't think he, yeah, yeah, because you was, don't, you don't like hear the voice. It was like a little high pitched than Jack Black normally talks. I will mm -hmm. admit that. Now, I'll, I'll, there, Jack Black does something a little more different, but like. When it's, like, the others are obvious. When it's Robert De Niro, it's Robert De Niro. When it's Renee Zellweger, it's Renee Zellweger. When it's Angelina Jolie, it's the sedu weird, awkward, seductive Angelina Jolie. <laughs> but is that such a bad thing? Like, I don't... I don't know. It, it, it's I don't hard know. to it's, quantify. It's, it's like, a little thing. Do you want sexy fish? Do you really need sexy fish? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, I don't know. I'm trying to, how do I put this? There's something, I, it's very hard to point, I realize that, because I, Finding Nemo is a solid movie, but I'm just really eh about it. Like, I, I never really, really felt much with that movie. It was just... He's finding his son, and then he finds the son, and then, you know, that that's the end. But you make it sound like, oh, there he is. Well, there he is. it kind of is. Like, I, there's nothing that really, like, I like The Incredibles. The Incredibles are having a sequel. I finally, I, I'm, I'm on board with that. I I just don't get the appeal with Finding, with finding Nemo. That's probably why I gravitate more to Shark Tale. If I had a choice to watch Shark Tale or Finding Nemo, I'd probably watch uh, it's, Shark Tale. It's like the emotional impact and the other, like, we'll get back to that later. That's actually my second choice. Yeah, so uh, it's, the, it's the dueling films, that's for sure. Yeah. This, this is perfect. This week's episode, we might talk about other shark movies, but this is all about Shark Tale versus Finding Nemo. Yep, that's the subtitle. When I come, wait till I come in. Oh boy, yeah. For me, oh, for me, Shark Tale, it, it, it's it's a guilty pleasure in my end because I know Funny Nemo was the guaranteed one because I used to watch it in high school. I used to show it in like in science class or something. Like there's oh look the little fishy, oh, look the fishy in the ecosystem and shit and. I had to watch Finding Nemo, and I, I thought it was a decent film. And Shark Tale, you know, you can think of a clever plot where Oscar is a shark slayer, and because Jack Black's shark wants to be, doesn't want to be a shark, doesn't want to eat, he's a vegetarian for some odd reason, which is clever. I mean, it, it just, it just took what you thought about animated film and just mixed it all together into something different, in my opinion. I mean. Oh yeah, that kind of reminds me of that allegory that people make about about Jack Black's character. You know, like because it's like it, it's kind of like like people take it as a metaphor that instead of like a shark being a vegetarian, it's like someone being gay. Remember, like that oh. talk. I never caught yeah, on like, to that. I never caught really? on to that. No, hmm. I never thought about that. No, because, like, a lot of people say, like, a lot of people say that. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I'm not saying they're wrong. Like, I can see it, but it's like, is it really the point of this movie? Are you sure it's not about the liar revealed stories about Oscar the Shark Slayer? Yo. Oh, man, yeah. Gotta add in the yo so we can make this movie hip for the cool kids. Well... Okay, yeah, it had a it had an herb. Maybe that's the bias. I, I don't want to admit that. Maybe because it, because it has a more urban slant to it, I I I, I gravitated more towards that one because it just had a certain style that that fine. Like um, I don't know the name of the characters, but the two like jellyfish guys. I think mm. I, one or both of them oh, are yeah. actually voiced by the Jamaican jellyfish and they were fun. guys. Yeah, they, wasn't it like Ziggy that's, that's Marley? Fun. Yeah, Ziggy Marley yes. voiced one of them. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. I don't They're know like Jamaican the other... Mon. <laughs> so, they had the best of the movie. It's gonna be alright. It's like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, Ziggy Martin and Dougie Doug. Yeah, it's Ziggy Marley was one of them. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. That, I think yeah. they had the best line in the movie, though. Oh, boy. I gotta explain it, I guess. Uh, I think the scene where right, Oscar goes... Uh, oh, is it... Is everyone there? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was a little oh. distracted. Yeah, we were just... Oh, no, I was just gonna say, like, there's that one scene where Oscar is absent and the two jellyfish have to... Or someone's absent and they have to... The original line is a whale wash, a whale of a wash, and a price, oh my gosh, and they keep, like, effing up the, room, the, the line, because I guess the idea is they're supposed to be baked or something, so then one goes on, and he's like, whale wash rhymes with gosh, and I don't know why, but that line just kills me every time. It's stupid, but it, I mean, that, that probably sums up why I like this movie better, like, that, it, that right there. <laughs> but, uh, there you go. All right. Okay. It rhymes with gosh. <laughs> 
It rhymes with gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's come back to me now. And um, so, All right. so recently, this year actually, um, actually last week I believe, uh, last week Saturday, um, like Matt said, Shark Sharknado Two came out this summer. But oddly enough, I discovered this recently, and I was shocked because I didn't see any previews for it. I didn't. I just I was watching TV, and I'm like looking. It was on Saturday. I was like, wait a minute, what is this? And it's the sequel to Sharktopus. They made a sequel okay. to Sharktopus. <sighs> and there's a third one in the making too. Let me. I'll get into that later. What? There's more Sharktopus? Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll get into that later. So this one caught my eye because. The ver it's like a versus battle, you know, because they had to feature another creature. So the sequel is called Sharktopus versus Terracuda. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh boy! There's, I think I think Asylum is trying to make their Godzilla with Sharktopus, or actually, no, that would probably be Shark. No. Sharktopus. Yeah, I think so. Cause... Shark Sharknado would be just a. It's technically just a thing. It's like a disaster kind of thing. Fa film. They're trying to make it. You never know. Maybe Shark Sharknado three could be like outside the U.S. It could be like international waters or something. Which they're making Sharknado. Oh, I don't know. But um, yeah. Terra Why? <laughs> oh, Sharknado three. Sharknado three. Terracuda. Terracuda. So. It recaps the first film in the first couple of minutes. It shows Shark. Uh, I'm not saying Sharknado. I'm saying Sharktopus. Shark Sharktopus, you know, killing people and being killed. And then you see this new scene where you see the egg sack of Sharktopus drift down into the water, and it's like it's a female. It's a female. It's a female. So is it like so? Suddenly it just became like oh, which one was it? Jaws three or something? Where Jaws turns out to be a... Probably. It was one of the Jaws films, yeah. Because in the first film, the the guy are looking looking for is like, you bastard, come here, you son of a bitch. And, you just... and now I'm like, wait a minute, it's a female? So eventually it goes in the stream and then these um, two people fish it out. And this uh, chick who works at this aquarium gathers it, opens the egg sack, and she just pulls out this mini shark to puss, a baby shark to puss. <laughs> so she... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she basically raises it, and, and it becomes this big main show for the aquarium. Why? <laughs> it's the strangest thing. And then, um, so then it cuts back to this other corporation that builds this mutated creature it's in Rob Robert wait what's the actor's name it's Robert Carradine the brother of David Carradine is in this film Robert uh, Carradine you might yeah. know from Revenge of the Nerds and he played Lizzie McGuire's dad in Lizzie McGuire yeah he's in this film he's in this <laughs> film he plays this another scientist like um, uh, Eric Robert played in the first film and he he was ta he's talking to some Head security guy is like, you know, you know how many planes the U.S. buys? Nothing. They use these drone pilots to, with a joystick. Ah, I don't like that shit. So I decided to create a new creature that's faster, can swim on into water, fly in the air, and we've been discovering this prehistoric DNA for years now. So they combined a pterodactyl with a barracuda and made it terracuda. Huh. Of course. Like that, that's the only logical solution. Because. <laughs> how does that work? I don't know. They just do it. <laughs> he did it. He explained it, how the two kind combined together. Like, I guess Barracuda has a really good eyesight, and, you know, the, uh, the pterodactyl part makes them fly. And what? But do they do, like, in, in uh, 
Uh, what was it in Jurassic Park? Do they take the DNA off of mosquitoes and stuff? I, they didn't. They never explained that. They never explained that. I was like, yeah. where did they get this prehistoric DNA from? They're basically like giving the middle finger to Michael. What's the Crichton or Crichton from mm-hmm. Jurassic Park? Is like, here's the general idea. Remember how this was done? Yeah, that's how that was done. <laughs> no, no, no. No, they took it off of the same place where Steven Sp- they took a pterodactyl off of the same place where Steven Spielberg shot down that triceratops. Freaking <laughs> <laughs> vultures, man. Yeah. So, they just fa- they just found one. They were like, "All right, let's mix this thing with a barracuda." <laughs> so, oh hey Spielberg, oh hey. <laughs> so um, I I kind of. I briefly watched this film, I kind of scanned through the parts, and just got the brief gist of it. So basically what happens is, just like in the first film, where the... Actually, it's kind of a little different in the first film, because this worker at the plant gets really pissed off at the head honcho, and hacks into the computer to, to control Terracuda. And they're trying to find him, the hacker, and then trying to uh, get Terracuda back in the process. And then, Robert... Carradine discovers that Sharktopus is alive, and they and they're like the the subject name was F11, so F11 is alive. I didn't know that. I'm thinking that's the offspring, the offspring, not the real original fucking mother. It's a, it's the offspring. So they go to the aquarium, they get Sharktopus to come back, they have the equipment back on to control him to get Terracuda back, and there's these big battles going on where Sharktopus is in the water, Terracuda's up here flying, and you get Terracuda to go into the water, and they, it's all over the place. You can't even follow it so fast. It's like, whoa, slow down, Terracuda. <laughs> slow down. Mm-mm. So it's this fast-paced and you get this action scenes you do. You get the versus battle you're looking for in this movie. It's like, oh, here comes Terracuda. Boom. Here comes Sharktopus. Boom. And he's back and forth, back and forth. So is Sharktopus a good guy in this? Yes. It is a good guy in this film. Oh, my God. So it's Terracuda. But, spoiler, at the end of the film, Terracuda dies and Sharktopus lives. Oh. Hence the third. Hence the third film. Uh. The third film, and this is this is a crazy film. The third installment is Sharktopus versus Mermantula. Merman? What? Mermantula. What? So a merman mixed with a um, tala tarantula. Are you serious? No. That's just... It is. That's not... <laughs> it is. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I... It doesn't. There's only... What I'm thinking of. Mermaid Man with eight legs. <laughs> oh. Evil! <laughs> yes. You just see Sharktopus. Evil! <laughs> they gotta duke it out on the... <laughs> They're both gonna duke it out on land doing weird walks. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Um, One of the scientists is apparently Barnacle Boy just helping him out. So, um... That's the thing! Okay, that's it. Sharknado 3 will be this. Will be the crossover. <laughs> we'll, we'll practically be the sequel to Sharknado and the sequel to the upcoming Spongebob movie. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So they're kind of doing like what Marvel's doing and bringing it all back eventually. Yeah, pretty style. much. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't get to the best part of the movie. Um, this this film marks the first acting debut of Conan O'Brien. I can test that. No. What about yeah, The Simpsons? Right? He kind of acted in that. Yeah, but that. That that's a cameo, like a fiat Imagine a movie debut, a movie debut. Okay, okay, that's true. As Conan O'Brien, he he did appear in the, he did appear in there though. And he, oddly enough. So yeah, only he, I can. Dance. He plays himself, and it's a hilarious cameo. It's, it's hilarious. So they're at the beach. 
he and uh, and her his a uh, female assistant, and uh, she's like, "Hey, you know, Sharktopus is coming our way based on the phone app we I got here." And he's like, Sharktopus! Sharktopus! Oh! It's scary! It's scary! I'm not afraid of no Sharktopus! <laughs> I ain't afraid of no Sharktopus. <laughs> Did he get eaten by the Sharktopus? <laughs> Let me get into it. So, uh, he, he's just relaxing, you know, at the beach, and then all of a sudden, you know, a nearby volleyball game was going on. He gets hit in the head by a volleyball. He's like, turns around like, Hey, you, do you know who I am? I am Conan O'Brien. I am famous. I am. I have a, I have a cable network. And then you see in the background, you see Sharktopus the tentacle. He oh. creep forward. Oh, wow. And Here all we... of a sudden, you see the tentacle go through his mouth. <laughs> oh, no. He died. Oh, bloody. Blood everywhere. Just <sighs> kills him on impact and just pulls him up, eats him, and moves on. So he that actually Shark- reminds me of something in Sharknado 2, actually. This is not a cameo, but... Don't mind if I spell this for you, Mike? Go ahead. Okay, the thing is, is that apparently in Sharknado 2, there was a moment where the movie stops so we could check what's going on, um, how Canadians are handling a Sharknado attack. Here's what literally happens. Oh, no. Okay. I know what you're talking about. I know what happens. Hi, I'm Rob Ford. Sharknado comes out. That is shameful. They should have at least gotten the real Rob Ford. Yeah. It doesn't even look like him. That would have been awesome. I was... With the amount of cameos they have, I was expecting Rob Ford to come out. Or at least Doug Ford or someone, anyone. Really? Like, with the things that he did in in, in, in his pol- political career, I'm surprised he didn't appear in Sharknado 2. Political chances, I assume. Yeah. Eviscerated by a shark through a window. Well, if he didn't get caught, he would have probably, like, continued on, like, even doing that. I was drinking, you know? I just did something stupid. <laughs> like doing cocaine. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I... Speaking of that, let me side note here. Side note. If you... If you... The Tonight Show is starring Jimmy, Fa, Jimmy Fallon. He always picks on Rob Ford mm-hmm. all the time, and it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. Mm. But... God. So, Sharktopus versus Terracuda... Is it, it's it's got what I like. I mean, it's got a versus battle that I was like, wait a minute, Terracuda? What the fuck are they smoking on? Like, that's, <laughs> that's like the for me, it's like the greatest thing ever combined. Like, what the fuck, Terracuda on the Barracuda? <clears throat> Blew my mind. Blew my fucking mind. So, of course, it was CGI crap. You know, CGI fighting. It was. But it was a good times because there was a couple of times where Terracuda would pick up Sharknado. Uh, I keep saying Sharknado. Damn it, Matt. Mm. It's his cousin. <laughs> Terracuda would pick up Sharktopus in the air, and, he, and they're like, and he drops it back in the water. It was just, it's fun. But otherwise, the actors in it, the acting in it, just, it, I didn't capture that. I was in there for the the battle mostly. I'm quite... I don't know if I'm excited for the third movie. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna happen. Mer... Mermantula? What the fuck? I don't know what Roger Corman and... Oh my... I don't know. There's like... Oh, so, God. um... If if there was a fourth movie, what would you combine for Shark uh, shark to post a battle. Like, you've, you've got this uh, mermaid, merman and tarantula. What would the fourth movie entail? Oh, oh. Mm. Ooh. How about... Hold on. We could get a... Per- First one would be Piranha. The next... Not Hammerhead. Have to be like a- oh, no, wait. Hammer sh- Hammerhead. Here, we got Hammerhead. And then... Uh-huh. It should be something like on the land. Anglerfish. An anglerfish. So, piranha. Actually, they would. Actually, they should do this. They should actually do a. um, Hammer angler. 
The should, Hammer Anger. They should do a crossover with another film that actually was in vain with Sharktopus. Uh, about the same time, they actually made a movie called Piranaconda, which combined a piranha and an anaconda. Oh. Yeah, that something like that. And that would be interesting to see those two... Except I don't think Pranacon had a big success in Sharktopus, but I think if they took Pranaconda and Sharktopus and put them together, that would kind of be a great crossover. Or they should see something like a Tasmanian eel or something. Why are you mixing sharks in this mix? It's got to be something besides a hammerhead shark, Matt. No, hammerhead sharks are uh, cool. (laughs) A manta ray. A manta and a wolf. Or a, a tortoise and a bee and, or like that. and a crocodile. There you go. That's, that's the one. Print it. Manta ray. Print that shit. Manta dial. Manta dial. Mm. Manta dial. Guys, we're going we to go. asylum. We got ourselves a movie. <laughs> Ooh, All we need is just the funding, and we'll get to work. Don't worry. Much to we know as much about making CGI as the people who are making those films. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Okay. So, Matt, your your discussion about Finding Nemo. Uh oh. Here we go. Let's do this. Oh. Finding oh Nemo. As we all know, the 2003 Finding Nemo that really launched Pixar into the top as considered one of the, uh, practically one of the greatest animation studios of all times. Finding Nemo, what really makes it is that it does have a timeless feel. Unlike Shark Tale, where they try to make the ship, they make the fishes fishes, what they're supposed to be. We got a fish and a son of a fish, and they're just fishes. <laughs> Okay, but what really makes it is actually the emotional bond between Marlin and Nemo, because there there really is a strong connection, and we Marlin is uh, a really paranoid fish, where like he really wants to take care of his son, mostly because of a tr- experiment uh, experience with a barracuda that ate his wife and most of the kids, which is Nemo, and Nemo when he got away like. He's pretty much determined, like, he is passionate not to lose him again. So he would practically, like, cross oceans, literally cross oceans in order to save him. And while, uh, along the way, meet interest, like, these interesting characters to help him out. Of course, there's Dory, the forgetful fish, but, like, often would, would stick him out, like, be with him thick and thin, so at least he won't be alone. Then there's Crush. And then, like, our shark in the movie, which is Bruce, which is pretty interesting, because unlike being a vegetarian, they're in this AA committee where they should not eat fish, where fish are friends, not food. Now, that one, it's funny. Like, it, it, it's, it's like, cute and funny at the same time where we see a bunch of fr- frightening sharks, and, like, they're, they're just in this little, like, AA meeting. Like, and then suddenly, like, Bruce would get a relapse where you even see his eyes grow in his predatorial state when Dory was bleeding. And that's the thing. That was one of the very, one of the very few Disney movies where we actually see a character bleeding. And also, like, even on Nemo's side, where he's in the aquarium, like, we even see how the life of a fish in an aquarium, in their perspective, is a lot of characters, like, uh, well, we got G- like Gil, Blow, um, Jacques, and all those characters. Like, it's interesting. We see a lot. Like, we learn about these characters and how they end up in the aquarium. What really makes Finding Nemo is the emotional bond between Marlin and Nemo. How like, the, like even though they go through tough times, even though sometimes it's tough. Being the son of Mar of uh, Marlin or the or the uh, of Nemo, sometimes it's both. It's difficult to be both, but there is a really strong 
um, father-son bonding in it. And also, like, there's a lot of care, of lovable characters, which often could be difficult to handle, but, um, thankfully, Andrew Stanton and the people at Pixar managed to find a way to connect them both together. And plus the fact you get amazing, amazing animation. Like, this is a really believable environment. This is a really believable, colorful environment where, like, even... Oh, and there's also, I forgot to mention, Crush and Squirt, also, like, in the EAC. So, like, you get to learn a lot about about these reefs and how they are living today. And it really is... It truly is a beauty to see. Like, this is... These are things that you would experience, like, when you're scuba diving. And, like, it's just... It's beautiful to watch, and it's beautiful to look at, and it's beautiful, beautifully written. And that's what I have to say for Finding Nemo. I don't have Very a mic, eloquent. but... <laughs> Dropped it. It didn't drop on me. Don't worry. You're supposed to toss it halfway across the... Across the set, like a, it's called a name? mic drop, not a mic toss. <laughs> no, but did you see the E3 when they asked? Um, I think like the CEO of PS3 to drop the mic. He he didn't quite get it, so he like chucked it halfway across the. the uh, I didn't see that. Oh my god! <laughs> he handed him a mic, and he's like, he chucks it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be cool on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty oh much. God. But you make, you make some case, good points, man. Yeah. Or in this case, I need to go to Wisconsin, pick up Mike, drop him, and then come back here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> good one. Nice. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> just like, just, you get up, just get up. It's like, hang on a sec. Airplane. Airplane. Drive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> Pretty much, just do like that Family Guy thing, like where St- like Stewie watches B- or t- orders that plane ticket, then yeah. goes in front of your house. Excuse me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my thoughts on Finding Nemo. <laughs> Drop the mic would be a good name for the the podcast. By the way, you're looking for like a new title. Drop the mic would probably be apropos as well. Yeah, but I talked him into like keeping Cinema Royale because like oh okay there was like all that like like he was worried about the other one, but apparently we're actually more popular than them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like we're we're good. We are the official royale. Although drop the mic would have been a great idea, actually. Uh, I like that. I like that. That would be actually pretty. That's actually a good idea. I might use that for something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Why. I don't know it why. could be a good like, for, like for a show or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like right. for. Your... I'll use it for something. Anyways. <laughs> Awkward silence for the wind. <laughs> So yeah, Funny Nemo. That's <laughs> um, like I said, I've seen it. I liked it. Bruce, Bruce, man, main feature of the shark. I mean, Bruce, you know that. I was surprised when like fish are friends, not food. And I was like, what the hell are they talking about? What or really? Why why are they doing this? But but when the blood came in, he just had those black beady eyes, like Jaws was, That's... and just like. Intervention! <laughs> that was great when he just like, ooh, you know, he was like, ooh. yes. That's why it just works so well it does, as an AA troop, <laughs> like getting his little relapse. That was hilarious. I love that. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, and it has a hammerhead shark. Goes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Hammers that point home. <laughs> yeah. But, like, even though it's just a little scene, like, 
It is interesting. This is actually one of the very few movies where we see a shark scene as a good guy. Like that and also um, Shark Tale. Like, if you have a, have a way to find a shark to be more of a good guy, like, of course, you've got the, the one that goes being vegetarian, but I, I will admit, shark in an AA meeting not to eat fish. That That is clever. That is clever. It's right up there. It's like, is, is, there any, is there any films where shark, like, okay, other than Jabberjaw, like, are there any other good sharks that we know? Okay. Other than shark, when you're a shark, which one? Um, it's not a movie. Um, it's pretty much the only one that comes to mind. Um, I don't know if either of you have seen this. It's a, I don't know if it's Hanna Barbera, but it's like a mid to late nineties cartoon on Cartoon Network. They used to have this block of, um, of cartoons, the What a Cartoon Show. So one that sticks out in my mind, and you can probably look it up online. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right because it, it, the spelling is wrong. It's like Fish and Chip, and it's like it's a it's a shark and it's a cat or a bobcat that work in a police office. And I think they had two episodes. I only saw the one, but I don't know if it's so much a good guy, but they're two like bumbling sidekicks. And it's like a, it's a five minute, it's a five minute short of them trying to catch this like bomber that's going around bombing uh, different parts of the city. So, um, that's it the looks only, familiar, actually. Yeah, but Bush, Butch Hartman. Think of Butch, um, Fairly Odd Parents. When I, when I, I, the minute I saw him draw shark teeth on uh, Fairly Odd Parents, I'm like, that's Butch Hartman. And it looked like his trademark to draw those big ah, like, teeth mm-hmm. and stuff. So he, he, he actually created, uh, the guy who made Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom created um, Pafisha. That was like his first foray into kind of getting something going, but it never took off. It took off. Well, what a so that's the only show anime is I like show. the origins. It's like the origin of many different cartoon, like um, oh, yeah. cartoon creators that will, that would go on to make like major TV, like oh. gr- major TV show. Oh yeah, because what a cartoon actually. Um, wasn't it Nickelodeon? I think it's wasn't it Nickelodeon that did that? No, 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 no. cartoon. No. Oh. oh. Oh yeah, cartoons. Thinking all... I'm thinking of oh yeah, yeah. cartoons. Also, oh yeah, and it also had the precursor of Family Guy. I remember. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um. What's his name? Larry and Steve. Yep. Yes, Larry and Steve. I was thinking of oh yeah. I was so big on that. I was thinking of oh yeah, cartoons because I, I believe one of the shorts they had on the oh yeah, cartoons was a precursor to Adventure Time. Uh, yes, that that's true. That Fairly Odd Parents. I think Fanboy and Chum Chum technically started there too. It was like so Dexter's Lab and there's Powerpuff Girls. That that Cow and Chicken, Johnny Bravo, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Uh, I name a lot of them. Mike Lewinog. I used to love that block. I thought that was the most brilliant like from the '90s. I loved what a cartoon show. It's pretty much. You know, it's funny. Is that what a cartoon show could be the cartoon version of Saturday Night Live? Because that's the origins of some some famous cartoons that we know and love. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so many, so many. I'm gonna go a little strange here because I do remember another show that has a shark in it, and it was a good shark. It wasn't a bad shark, and this is like obscure because. At one point, it was a Saturday morning block. It was like Discovery Kids, where they had Time Warp Trio, I believe, and some other shows. And there was one called Kenny the Shark. And it's basically a shark that talks, of course, and he walks on land and becomes somebody's pet. What, Kenny the Shark? What? It made no sense whatsoever. And the shark. It kind of, it kind of looks like, kind of draws it, like what the, the hell? Of it? Yeah. That looks yeah. awful. Oh, NBC, of course. They, they were like the nader of Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, that's like, what who, it was. It was NBC. Yeah. Uh, who watches Saturday morning cartoons on NBC? Like, who did that? I uh, mean, I probably did it. I usually point. go like Fox Kids or Fox Box or stuff like that. Or WB more... or something like that. Yeah, Kids WB that's in NBC is for the educational the, the educational bland garbage and and, mm. and uh, Saved by the Bell. <laughs> oh, oh. And then you got this shark. 
And then you got like this shark, like. <laughs> oh yeah, he was like this happy-go-lucky shark, like, hey, let's do some something today. Let's it's like some... with these major sharp teeth. It's like, yeah, what? Just, it just oh, it was so weird. Did you see what else he made? The guy what? who made that crazy show. Um, it's Jim yeah, Jenkins. Sure. Yeah, he's the guy who did uh, PB and J and Doug, the oh, Nickelodeon really? Doug. Yeah. Really. Oh, okay. See, so that's the thing. See, 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 they have to do something aside from their other works. They had to do some side projects. Jesus Christ, Kenny the Shark, man. It just, yeah, it was just the weirdest fucking show. And I was just a kid, and I was like flipping through Saturday morning cartoons, like. ABC, all right. How can you really be? How can you really like something that looks this I, I didn't, menacing? I didn't like it. I mean, even at his happiest, he's like, I know. It's like this huge sharp teeth. He, he's huge, and he he befriends a dog too. So he often talks to a dog too, and it's like, what the fuck? Is, what? So how did they explain it's, away his predatory tendency? Like he didn't get an urge to eat their baby or their their oh, pet or anything? Oh god, what was it? No, because he didn't eat people. He ate like meats. He, you know, the kid would give him like, a, like a steak once in a while or something, like some kind of meat by product. So know. if they forgot to feed him, he'd be out for them, and so they. Probably. They it. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, where's the food? Oh, we don't got any. Oh, that's right, it's right in front of me." <laughs> like, pick through that finale. Up. Like, hold on, I'll show you this. Like, hold on, this is me... horrifying. Yeah, let me show you this. This is supposed to be a touching picture, but it looks horrifying out of context. Okay. Look. Yeah. Like it's a, yeah, it's supposed to be a touching Creepy. moment, but he looks like he's a predator. Like, like literally, yeah, he looks like a so people... predator, especially with those teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Don't talk to strangers, kitties. Stranger oh. danger. Yeah. Oh my a god. A predator in that way too. So, wait. Like, oh god. So, Don't worry, I'll start with the top, and then the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't remember why the. Take that in any context you want. <laughs> I don't remember why Kenny decides to move out of the ocean. It was just weird, like too crowded. It was just, it, it, uh, I don't, yeah, don't know. <laughs> you banned him. I... Oh God! There's a hint. Oh my God! You're not gonna. You're not gonna. <laughs> you're not gonna believe what I found. It's another character in the show. <laughs> it's another character. Oh. Hold on. Here. I see. remember. Yeah, yeah. His friend was a hammerhead. False. Yep. <laughs> another hammerhead. hammerhead? Really? Yeah, one of his friends was a hammerhead. <laughs> Always got a shoe in the hammerhead. I guess. Just cut. Don't give me. I just found it. <laughs> I swear to God. Let me see. I think it was under characters. I believe. Let me see. Da 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 da. He's. Oh, and we got a killer whale. He's a tiger. Kenny's a tiger shark. Comical with a go lucky attitude. He was tired of life in the ocean and went to the surface, where he was able to walk on his two tail fins and breathe air like humans. <laughs> he can't control himself when he hears or sees a seal. Aha! He he goes crazy when he thinks. Or hears or sees a seal, so he, he likes seals. Um, Kenny lives with a eleven-year-old girl named Cat, uh, who talks with Kenny. He lo he loves eating chum, seal pops, seals, and sushi. Chum. Chum's that like when I think of chum, I think of that Ren and Stimpy episode where they go fishing and they have this big bucket of like red fleshy like guts and eyes and stuff. But essentially, I think that's what chum is like. Fish or like fodder bait for to attract fish to the area. Well, that's what I just think of the chum bucket that's, in SpongeBob. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Plankton was selling chum. Um, I'm trying to see. It's just a weird fucking. Oh my god. What did you just find? What is this? Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read something here. This is weird. Show it. 
It's not a picture. It's a, it's a, it's a description here. So there's a group of okay. there's a group of girls called the Thebes. There's three popular girls there. There's a blonde Caucasian, a Latina, and African American. Um, so after at first they were afraid of Kenny, but they liked him for his cuteness. And after seeing a movie called Finding Nimoy. It's a it's a parody of Finding Nemo, and it, a movie about a sh- baby shark named Nemoy on a pa- on a journey to return to his parents. <laughs> really? There was Leonard Nemoy in only... that episode. Yeah, I was thinking of that. It's like it be I need to find. <laughs> I am lost in the middle of the ocean. I need to go find my parents. Oh my God, <laughs> I wish I could beam my way out, but I can't. It's Damn defunct it. in the water. Damn atmospheric pressure. Oh I don't know. I just I was thirteen at the time when it came out, so I was just a no, pointless man. No. teenager. I was just like, oh, it is on TV. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just the, That's pretty low, man. It, it was low for me. There was nothing <laughs> else on TV. I mean, yeah. fucking... No. I, I'm a, there I, must be more than just Kenny the Shark. Kenny the Shark is a part of the There Is Nothing on TV. <laughs> I mean... Then this is the nothing. Hence nothing. Nothing. I was going to say, I did, I did dig the hell out of Jabberjaw, too. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Jabberjaw. Whoop, whoop, Sounded whoop, like whoop, whoop, curling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's supposed Link. to be like a mix of Curly and crap. Who's that? Who's that other character? Yeah, Roger Dangerfield. Rodney. Rodney. Dangerfield. Yeah, Rodney Dangerfield. Why yeah. did I say Roger? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That I was, was that was actually good, but wow, we're way off topic. We're still talking about sharks, but it's an- we're still, yeah, we're still talking about sharks. It's an animated sharks. We're still bu- we're still we're still buying time for James to come. So yeah, of course, when he comes. Um, wow. Uh, we do, on the timer here, we have 18 minutes. <laughs> Not so good. Um, um, I know Sylvie had a movie called Deep Blue Sea. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> and what is this Deep Blue Sea? Did... Oh, you never seen that? No. I don't think so. Hold on, let me just go check some info. Um, Joy to the Fears, Deep Blue Sea. Yeah. Wait, which one? Deep Blue Sea. The, the, the 99 one. The okay. 1999 one, yeah. Deep Blue Sea. Whoa, that is a shark. Deep Blue yeah. Sea is the one with Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, yeah, hello, cool J. I was talking about that with Matt just briefly. Just like, yeah, that's the movie when he's monologuing and all of a sudden a shark comes behind him and eats him. That's the most famous scene that probably has millions of views on YouTube, actually. Yeah, well, that's more because of Samuel L. Jackson than Shark. Exactly. But there's a lot more to that besides Samuel L. Jackson and the Shark. There's a, a plot behind Deep Blue Sea. Of a sort, yeah. Like, that's another movie I haven't seen in ages. Um, I remember we had, like, an old VHS tape, and there was that, and I think South Park, the South Park movie on it. I did watch Deep Blue Sea, and I enjoyed it. So, if I recall correctly, it's about scientists that capture these sharks. I think they can find the cure to Alzheimer's within their brain matter. So, they're genetically or scientifically modifying these sharks to, I guess, increase the brain mass. So, obviously, big brain equals more smart. So, suddenly, these sharks... (laughs) Well, in, in movie logic. So, they become intelligent, like predators. So it's basically one of those movies where, it, for and I don't know why, what possessed them to have the lab underwater, like 50 feet underwater, but basically the lab fails and it's like filling with water. So the survivors of the crew have to find their way back to the surface, all the while avoiding the killer sharks. Mm. So, but, but it was an interesting movie in the sense that I guess it subverted a lot of the, the tropes with not so much shark movies, but just so all these like, um, animal disaster movies like Anaconda and stuff where mm-hmm. oh like the black guy always dies or oh, it's always a hot chick and the and mm-hmm. the main like type mm-hmm. A personality and 
they don't they don't follow that that trend. Um, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Does. But I don't know. Like in the poster, from what I see, there is still that hot girl. Yeah. Well, do you want me to spoil it? It's not like I'm gonna watch it. So go okay. Ahead. Actually, like one of the shocking moments is like pretty much the last five minutes of the film. It's 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 Samuel L. Jackson. Um, the main like male character and the main female character. She, I think she, if I recall correctly, she does something to distract the shark so that they can escape. But in doing so, she sacrifices her life. So the sharks come in and kill her pretty much at the very, very end of the movie. So at the very end, when the main characters are up on the on the shore, it's just Samuel L. Jackson and the dude. And I think the rumor was, um, I think screaming screenings. Of the of the film, the audience hated her because it's actually her fault that so many people died. Because I think um, I think they they had the opportunity to kill the sharks before they escaped and started doing everything. And she said, "No, it's for the research." So she let them go. Yeah, and like oh, six other people wow. died. So they didn't they didn't feel she deserved to live because because of her actions. It, it, it rather than having everybody die because of the water. They died because of the sharks. They could have, they could have, ever, like six more people could have lived, I think. So I think they changed, they altered the ending. So it was just LL Cool J and the other guy. And I, I thought that was kind of cool. They set it up for a sequel, but I guess it just wasn't popular enough to, to, uh, to happen. But Deep Blue Sea, it's, uh, it's something to check out. I, I think it subverts the whole, oh, we got to get from point A to point B and these people mm-hmm. die. Yeah, it's like it's more different than those shark movies then it's like it's not really about the shark going nom 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 on people yes it, i think it's more character driven if i recall correctly it's not so much the, the, the effects were good for 1999 it's not a it wasn't an awful hmm. film so I, I i recommend it and I, I don't see too many shark films so that's probably why uh, okay yeah well i mean it, it is more it's like this is a more different one than like the modern shark films today, but I can see what you mean. But like, honestly, I don't know what else to say because like, all I know so far is just the Samuel L. Jackson scene, what you told me about like the hot chick in there, apparently. So wait, where did Mike go, anyways? Bathroom? I guess he didn't even say. My. You got bored listening to Deep Blue Seas. Like, I can't stand this podcast no more. That's the end. <laughs> How can that be? Out of all the crap we've been through, Deep Blue Sea <laughs> is the one that broke him? That's Trust me, the we, one. We went through so much crap. Okay, there was at one point when all of us had to sit and watch That's My Boy, and he did not even crack on that. Oh, God. Yeah. It's literally one of the worst films I've ever seen. Ugh, that sounds bad. Oh, yeah. No, oh, trust oh me. God. You have no idea how bad it is. Oh, my God. Never drink three bottles of water before doing a podcast or during a podcast. Also, that's what happened. <laughs> we thought you left. We thought Deep Blue Sea had broken you. Yeah. We thought you broke down for Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> Which is utterly shocking, considering that we had to sit through freaking That's My Boy. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what to say for Deep Blue Sea? Because I'm honestly at a loss. I've heard about Deep Blue Sea. I've, I'm aware of the infamous J- Samuel L. Jackson scene. I actually have it on file on my computer, ready to be watched. Um, yeah, I, I mean, smart sharks. I mean, you don't hear that concept very well in shark movies. I mean, either they're a, a hybrid animal, either they're a, a prehistoric shark that either is a dino shark, swims through sand, th- swims through snow. You, you never hear about sharks that become genetically smarter through science. And they just... It, it, it threw me off. And, it, and this is a... A A list shark movie, mind you. This is not like a asylum, or so this is way before the asylum or sci fi ever did shark movies. This is 
the man who directed it was like Rennie Harlan, who directed Die Hard Two, and a bunch of other films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And Cliff and Cliffhanger. Oh, Cliffhanger! Yeah, with him was uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Oh, he just he just did uh he just did Hercules. No. Oh no the no. Legend of Her- That's a different yeah. Hercules, I think. Oh no, wrong Hercules. No, 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 Sorry. No. That's probably the no. offshoot one that they try to steal from. Yeah, that's the uh, yeah that's it's not the Rock version. Okay. No, no, no. The, <laughs> never mind. No, the, the, the the Rock version is directed by Brett Ratner. Yeah. I thought it would be a great coincidence. It's like, oh, he did Hercules. Oh no, it's not that Hercules. <laughs> oh, sad. <laughs> it's the counterfeit Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, but yeah, then it, it kind of had a trope where they had, like, rap stars turn into actors being it. Like, L.O. J is a rapper and he was in this film and. He's pretty and, good. He, he could act. He was pretty funny. Yeah, I noticed that in a couple of clips I've seen. And, and um, it's kind of like Anaconda, too, where they had Ice Cube in the film, too. It was just like the, the 90s were the thing where rappers turn actors and. I'm never going to take uh, I'm never going to take uh, Ice Cube seriously. I will never because y- you're never going to yeah. do that either if you have seen um Are We There Yet. Oh, I have not. Uh, you have not boy, seen I, that? I've actually no. did. I don't know if I want reason. to. That's I, I can't He was in Friday. I can't see him in like a like a Friday like vacation movie. Yeah, for, Ice yeah, Cube? For, yeah, for, yeah. Yeah, you you weren't there when we talked about the uh, Stoner films. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's a yeah. Stoner Friday film. is like oh, a okay. stoner film, and one of those from the nineties. Well, that's not fair. You can't really. It, you, there is marijuana use but, in it. I'd say it's more of a coming of age story when you think of it, because one of those movies that take place in the span of like twenty four hours. Yeah, I wouldn't call it so much a stoner film. That's not. That's not appropriate. There's marijuana. You, if you want a stoner film, maybe Friday After Next. Oh, sorry, no, no, next no, Friday. Next Friday. Okay. No, 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 you would, you know, you want that, uh, what was it, it's, it's the one with Snoop Dogg and that other actor, crap, what was it, it's, it's, it's the one where they're in, Soul no, Plank? the one where they're in, maybe, it's the one where they're in high school. Is that, is that the new oh. one that came out? Yeah, it's, it's a new one, it's like, so what we get drunk, so what we smoke weed, who I... wants some fun, we got what we need. Wow. You're just uh, dating us, like I, I, I think I heard that song before. Yeah, it, it's actually where that one comes. Yeah, that that I see, that song yeah, came I, from. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, well, excuse me, it's not a stoner film. I just had to like because we had, we talked about it on a previous episode. So excuse me, coming of age, coming of age. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is coming of age. Ah. Yeah, so what if he's, like, already 20, like, in his 20s when it happens, so he's kind of missed the age where he's supposed to have a coming-of-age, but I, I interpret it as a coming-of-age story, like, in Everybody, the hood or something. different. Hey, you're never too, it's never too late for a coming-of-age story. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You're never, it, it, you don't have to be just a teenager in order to be a coming-of-age story. Mm. That's just the target demographic. I agree. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, let's see what what do we have in the meantime do we have other ghost shark movies no I mean just shark movies to talk about <laughs> uh, I, I've got shark I, things but not I got I, I actually just spilled mine because like I have an idea of what to talk about in case of these situations where like we already did our two shark movies to yeah, talk about usually, sometimes we have like yeah. filler but yeah. we do have let's see Six um, minutes and thirty-seven seconds left. So some time left. Okay, so okay, so um, I've actually this is not this is one I haven't seen completely, but this is one that I actually saw parts of it. I actually went to see, I actually saw Ghost Shark. <laughs> Ghost Shark. This is enough. Uh, wait, wait, Ghost wait, Shark. Wait, wait, this is you go on, Matt. That's one of James's movies, and J- James and I sat through it and watched it. Oh my god, yeah, seriously? So that's one of his films. Crap. <laughs> oh but my yeah. god. Well, James is not here, so... Go ahead. Might as well. Go, go shark. shark. Yeah, go ahead. Go. Let's do it. I, I'll, I'll come to you with it. 
Okay, you could correct me I if will. I'm wrong. Ghost Shark is apparently... It's like your after shark movie. Like, a shark goes to attack, and then suddenly... Like, he, they kill him. They actually manage to kill the shark. But here's the catch. Is that afterwards, the shark is dead, but now his ghost is coming in to haunt all the, all the other people and then eat them. So it's still continuing. I haven't seen the end. I don't know what it is, but that's how I know about the concepts. Like, they killed a shark, but the shark is still a ghost. It's like, now you're bringing, like, ghost shark into this? It's like, just the amount of concepts you can do with yep, a ghost yep. shark. Let me... Uh... Coming soon, you're going to have... And then coming soon, you're going to have a ride in which you're going to be... Like, you're going to be riding along, and then suddenly, like, there's going to be a ghost shark sitting, sitting in the middle going... No, let me uh, let me elaborate on it because you did the basic synopsis of it. What? Yeah, that well, that's I all know, I know. I know, but let me elaborate on it a bit. So, um, it it is at the beginning of the movie, these they're they're like shark hunters. They 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 fish for sharks for like competition. So one shark really pissed them off. They were shooting and they neglecting it. You know, trying to shame it, and he gets pissed off, and. This is weird, like, the shark body floats into a magic cave where they can make people come back from the dead. So, the go What? Yeah, there's a magic cave in this freaking movie. It just... It's, it's, it's really confusing. So, uh, Ghost Shark comes, and this is really creative. Ghost Shark can come out anywhere there's water. Anywhere. So, there's scenes where they see, uh, some guy fixing a pipe, and all of a sudden, om nom nom nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god. Um, there's a, I, I think a, a, there's a toilet. Yep, yep there's, there's a toilet, a, isn't there? Yeah, I was just about to yeah, think of course. Course. Yeah, because he, he pops up and he eats the guy's ass out. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's like, um, who the heck is it? Is it, um... Like the, the is it the mayor of the city? Yeah, like the mayor of the city gets um, like his ass right. eaten out by the shark because he he says I'm gonna get my ass eaten you know, out by the shark and later on. Already, I just I just found this already. No. Already. No, no, no. Right. If you're if you're talking if you're talking yeah. about Go Shark Two, it's not related to this film. Oh really? No, you, well then. No, what? It, yeah, it's. James and I talked about that too when we screened the film. I actually discovered it. And I was like, "What's Go Shark Aww. 2? Well, apparently, Go Shark Two is like this fake trailer that was on YouTube. It got so popular, they decided to make a movie out of it, and it features a lot of bad movie actors, like um, somebody oh. from Troll Two, um, well, somebody that's from the room, and it was just one of those. Yeah, I know. I was hoping, like, wait. That would have been so like, great for an actual actual ghost shark movie. It's like, like he's just gonna be like in a pool and just be like, "Hey, what's going on?" Yeah, it just it didn't make sense because they actually killed out the shark at the end of the movie. So I don't know how they would resurrect it for the sequel. But um, you get like a witch or something. I can or, imagine that's... like, I don't know, but he... I can imagine that since the since the shark appears in any form of water, I can imagine a guy goes out in the forest, he'll just pee, oh, and then suddenly, oh, go god. shark! Oh my god, that's bad. <laughs> that's really bad. Uh-uh. Like, you just see a stream, and then suddenly, shark! <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I said, it was there was a slip and slide, so the kids are going on a slip and slide, and it's actually a shark slip and slide. And the shark and the oh. shark flies through, oh. eats it up. <laughs> there was oh, eats yeah, the kids, eats the kids right in the slip and slide. Aww. Oh man, that's not cool. You don't kill kids. And there's a <laughs> pool party at one point where the main characters are, and the shark just jumps up and eats a guy that's diving in, into the pool. It's just even puddles of water, and even even when it rains, the shark comes from de- from up above. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's just that's some it's one of those weird movies where it's just it takes the concept <laughs> of it's like a little droplet. Oh well, no! It was just a bunch of rain came down and just you see this glowing light like shark came down. 
they even like they, they, oh. like they like ripped off like Nightmare on Elm Street with the bath scene where the shark's in the bathtub with the girl and eats him up. Oh it's really? That iconic scene where the claw comes up in the movie and then. You know like you know you know what would really make the movie amazing to watch, other than the pee. Sure. Ghost Shark needs to come out of a glass of water. It did. It did. Yeah. That, it did. It did. Now, let me explain. Oh, it was, they're looking for the, the shark, and it's like at a police office. They, there's a bubbler of water. The guy takes a cup of water. Oh. And all of a sudden, oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh that my actually God. happened in this film. Yeah, it even says in the synopsis here in the Wikipedia, it says, swim pools, baths and showers, puddles, rain, and even a cup of water. Even a couple. Oh my <laughs> God, why? Possibilities are endless. endless. So, <laughs> and um, so the magic cave is involved with this plot, where it they have to destroy the magic cave in order to kill the ghost shark. That's a real Ooh, that, villain. Then. Just the ghost shark. The is magic like cave. A, is it literally called the magic it, it just, cave? I don't think it's the, the actual name of it, but they just say, "Oh, it's the cave. The cave, like cave of cave. wonders." <laughs> I was about to say the cave of wonders. <laughs> Instead of but instead of a tiger, it's just a big shark. You shall pass. And this, and this movie is a major Jaws ripoff. Major Jaws ripoff because it's got tropes of Jaws. Because there's like the mayor that does not want anything disclosed about the ghost mm-hmm. shark. There's there's actually a sheriff named um, Martin as the main character of Jaws. There's like so many tropes of Jaws in this film. It's just unbelievable. Oh my god. What a coincidence, <laughs> Matt. It's fucking ghost shark. No, but, oh, okay, now I know the crazy thing that ghost shark can come out of. A drool. <laughs> like, imagine a baby's just there and then suddenly he's drooling and then suddenly ghost shark <laughs> comes out to eat the mother. <laughs> Oh my god. Aw. An orphan. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't think of it like that. Imagine if it's like the busty babysitter. It's like, okay, now we gotta, okay, now we gotta eat. He's a baby. Oh my god. <laughs> think, of it, think of it on a more positive tone. <laughs> what about the kids? What about the children? The baby is the carrier of the ghost shark. (laughs) Oh my god. The baby will be okay. (laughs) I can't stop laughing now. (laughs) Oh man. Um, Actually, I've been thinking about this. Like, I I was thinking about my own asylum sci-fi movie, shark movie, and I came up with one. Uh, actually two, I originally thought of two, but one actually exists. Let me tell you this one. There's a movie coming out called Zombie Shark. All right. All right. It's it's a foreign film, too, so it's it's not an English production. It's a foreign film, like, in, like, South America, I believe. It's, like, at a Facebook page and, like, a trailer on YouTube, and I was like, really? A zombie shark? Like... How did the zombie die, and how does how did the shark die? How did it become a zombie? It's like really <laughs> confusing. <laughs> but but I think I know we came up with this. I came up with a movie called Space Shark. Oh yeah. Space shark. Come on. They this is a, this is the balls to the wall movie they have to make Space Shark, where they go into space. This ragtag group. And then they fe- the cast features a right tank group from a bunch of other shark movies like, what was it? Brooke Hogan was in a couple of films. I was like, oh, let's put Brooke Hogan in there. Let's put Christy Swanson in it. And you put Debbie Gibson in it. And then you put John Snyder from Dukes of Hazzard, Bo Duke. You put John Brownman from Doctor Who and Torchwood. Um, there was another... There's a cameo by uh, John Hurd. He plays like a small lead. Oh right, for, for your gag, for, for your space for shark gag thing. at the end. Like it's perfect full circle for John Hurt. 
Why would you do that for John? Why would you do that to John Hurt, though? So the thing is, what happens in the film would be that sp- they go in. They're in a spaceship. They're in a man-made mission to space. They get sucked into a wormhole. They end up in a alternate reality dimension thing where space sharks roam the space. Space. One of the space sharks finds the spaceship and starts attacking, even getting inside the spaceship. So this crew has to figure out how to kill these space sharks and just move, go back home. So John Hurt comes in. He's known for his alien bursting scene, Alien. So the reversal would be that a shark eats John Hurt, and he bursts out of the shark and kills it. You know what I say? Replace the cameo with Sandra Bullock. Oh, gravity. Exactly. She's too good for that. No, but so is John freaking Hurt. So is John Hurt. Sandra Bullock will be like... One A-list actor in it, at least. Like like 20 minutes. Or no, 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 no. You know what you should have? Like, you, you should have... Cocky space, uh, cocky astronaut George Clooney, again from Gravity. Like he'll be out. Like he'll be. It's like, oh my God. you know that shark. You know that shark. If you could just stab it, maybe it'll die. Maybe you should try that. You know, you do have that. That knife is right over there. Or you could break it, and you could break glass. And it'll be like a knife. You should do that. <laughs> Boy, you, you're attached. I know that's what I you're would do. You're attached to gravity way too much, man. I love gravity. <laughs> it has a special place in my heart for many different reasons. Plus the fact that I saw it on my birthday. Oh. So yeah. So, plus I saw it in the in the big on the big screen in theaters with my friends. It's just I, I had a very special moment. Good. Very good. So, shark movies. I mean, Jaws started it all. Thanks to Jaws, we got shark movies. You know, the phenomenon of sharks. And Shark Week provides that with real sharks. Mike, is that you? Sylvie, tell me that's you. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, na- okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, time's up. Um, actually, I just want to mention. Funny that you mentioned that that we did an entire podcast about shark movies, and not once did we ever talk about Jaws. I know. Isn't that weird? You're cool like that. <laughs> that's the obvious trick. That's, that's what the obvious yeah. people who have a podcast talk about. They're like. Mmm, shark movies, we talk about Jaws, you know. Oh, God, you know, talking about Jaws in a, po- in a mo- podcast about shark movies, oh, they're being way too mainstream. I mean, yeah, I mean, Jaws was good, Jaws 2 was good, Jaws 3 pushed a little bit with the 3D, and uh, Dennis Quaid and frickin' Sam- Simon Mc- McCorkendale in it, it's... Cheesy guilty pleather and Jaws the Revenge, uh, stupid. Actually, Ghost Shark is actually <laughs> Jaws the Revenge in a sense because it re- it's a shark that comes back to life. For, to, for, Except one shark comes out of a cup of water. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Thank you, Steven Spielberg, for that Jaws movie to inspire everybody to make shark movies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're welcome. I'm going to go shoot another dinosaur now. (laughs) (sighs) So, for the next episode... Okay. Send him a password where we try to guess what the next topic of the podcast is. Okay. (laughs) How do I... How do I describe the topic? How do I give clues? Like, it's very obvious, because... Do you need an obvious guess? Obvious one, or a not obvious one? I'm trying one? not to do the non-obvious one, because I want to try to challenge Sylvie. 
I know one. I know one. You want me to say it? All right. We mentioned him in this podcast. Is it Samuel L. Jackson? Damn it. I told you that was the obvious one. That was the obvious <laughs> that one. That was the obvious? obvious one. Which, which one were I you going to go for? Oh, like, originally I was going to go, it was like, like, think of, like, think of a hint for her, motherfucker. <laughs> I would have gotten that. It's Samuel L. Jackson, of course. Gotta, gotta have that link between Deep Blue Sea and Samuel L. Jackson. Great segue in the next episode. Like, I thought you would say... Like, you know, like, we did talk about other people, like, the hot chick in Deep Blue Sea, or Conan O'Brien, or <laughs> the, the amount of cameos that I said. We could be doing a podcast of Billy Ray Cyrus. Because those, those shark movies are just full of, like, A-list actors, so. <laughs> yes. It was a very tough decision. <laughs> Who else had a lot of B-list actors. <laughs> yes. We could talk about all the things that Al Rooker was in. <laughs> Yes, so Samuel L. Jackson in the next episode, because he's a bad motherfucker, that's for damn sure, and he deserves an episode dedicated to him and his films. Motherfucker. <laughs> and by the way, Mike, you gotta work on this. Next week, next time, we gotta have the motherfucker count. Every time we say motherfucker, we need to count her. <laughs> oh yes, there'd be a lot of motherfucking motherfuckers in this podcast <laughs> oh man this has been Cinema Royale I'm your host Mike Mixtape saying go watch T Blue C see Samuel Jackson be eaten by a shark I thought you said Samuel L. Jackson survived that's in the alternate take that's the oh, oh the alternate that's take alternate oh ending. the one that... see, that's the oh. Weren't you paying attention, Matt Brails, known as Adamat? Yes, I know. I well a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna Sometimes, I'm gonna slap yes. some sense in you, motherfucker. Next time. <laughs> Don't even try. All right. Well, this is Matt saying, "See you later, dudes," and go hammerheads. <laughs> Support your fellow hammerheads. Sylvie. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Shark Week. I don't know. <laughs> I'm as old as Shark Week. Woo. Yes. Is Shark Week yeah, really that old? Yep. Mm. Oh, 97. No, 87. 1987. Oh. Now, do you understand, Matt? <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, motherfucker, let's do it! Take the reins. Hmm. This is gonna be fun.